Dark. Special. Gumiho. Creator. Africa TV. Freak Up Studio. Live. 2023 GSL Season 2. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we just had a great series with Dark versus Special. Special really putting up quite a fight against Dark, even taking uh, game one in the series off Dark before Dark fought back twice as hard uh, and came out with that 2-1 victory. Up next, we're going to have Gumiho versus Creator. Yeah, this should be an interesting series. I don't really know where Creator is at right now in terms of his form. It feels like it's been a hot minute since we saw him do well in a GSL code S, right? As Pratos, especially in Korea, has been struggling a little bit. Meanwhile, Gumiho just seems like he's on fire right now, man. I mean, he's just been popping off in S-tier tournaments, made another round of 16 here in the GSL Code S, and I mean, you see right here on your screen, second place against Serol, 2-4, almost a champion from Masters 2023 Summer. Yeah, man, Gumiho has, has been an incredible far, uh, form, excuse me, and he's also just been like a kind of tough guy to pin down on what he's gonna do. He's got an abstract approach to the game, um, he clearly works with his own set of ideas and, and, and approaches. Uh, and he's going to go up against Creator. And Creator, you know, I got a lot of respect for this guy. He's worked his ass off. He has a lot of love for the game. He's very hungry to become a champion. He also, like Special, has a very wide range of builds. He has a lot of stuff he's working with. But he does seem to blunder moves. He does seem to misstep in game. It does feel that way. And I think some of that comes down to emotions. He's a very emotional player. And if things yeah. start to not go his way, or even if he feels like he's underperforming, you know, his own expectations for himself. Maybe like he's winning the match, but he missed micro some oracles or some other. He units. forgot an upgrade or something. Yeah, exactly. we've all been there. You know, you could be your own worst enemy. So we got to see if he can conquer those demons. But at the same time, his opponent is so strong. And especially right now in such good shape, it should be a really interesting 2023. match. GSL Season 2. Club NV, creator. I like those glasses. I, feel like I, do too. I feel like they might be new. I think they are. They seem like the same shape as before. I was thinking before. that I, I didn't say anything, but yeah, I was thinking that in my head. It looks like the same shape, but a better material. I'm gonna have to run run downstairs after we finish GSL today. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, hey, it's SOS. SOS. Cool. All right. Wow. Well, that's cool. There's a face we haven't seen in a while. Of course, SOS did retire uh, many years ago by now, actually. Um, One of the best to ever do it, I got to say, man. Yeah, I he, think he definitely retired when he was on top, too. You know, yeah. I think um, uh, you know, he, he, especially for the race Protoss, there's few that ever did anything close to what he did. I feel like he encapsulated the Protoss race more than anybody else. Well, ever had or possibly ever will well, in I think, StarCraft I think with too. SOS, I think he was just able to kind of navigate that race and, and, and use the kind of odd features about it. He was never rigid. He was always inventive. He knew how to do crazy cheese. From Hong Kong, welcome. Creator finds some creator support in the audience here. Um, but yeah, he always kind of knew how to play. I, I had this quote that I, I said a while back, but I, I was very happy when, it, when I said it. It's like, uh, some of these guys play music and they know all the notes and the build, but he plays jazz. Like he can kind of improv mm -hmm. it. He can get into a game and it can be weird. He can see something and know, uh, you know, a very uh, kind of instinctually figure out how to how to handle himself. Uh, he also could prep some insane builds that he'll only be able to use once ever and then never bring that back out again. Absolutely, one of the scariest people to ever have to face in like a best of five or a best yeah. of seven as well. Well, he, you know, went one. You know, several BlizzCons mm -hmm. when that was what you know the de facto world championship. Hundred thousand dollar man. Yeah, I mean he just was so good. So that's very cool to see him back here and, and supporting uh, the GSL and everything. Yeah, I wonder how much he talks with Creator about uh, about his gameplay at all. 
So I, do, I do know that some pro players they retire, but you know they still keep up conversations about like the game. And yeah, well, a, lot of, a lot of them sometimes will even queue up and get you know and play a couple. They just don't. They, they want to take down the mantle of like you know, especially when you're as big as him. You know, any tournament you show up, people are like, "Are you going to win this whole thing?" And he might mm -hmm. be like, "Oh, I'm actually." Because some people say they're not active when they are. You want to basically publicly say, "No, I'm really not active, and don't expect me to be there." Mm -hmm. the game's going to have a different kind of pl place in my life, so to speak. All right, so on creator side of things, Gateway expand into a Twilight Council here. Presumably will be Blink as he starts that up, whereas Gumiho also playing quite standard. No, a little bit faster with the tech. I think two Reapers in total. Widowmine, Jiggy Widowmine out here. Might be able to catch some Adepts later. I imagine that's going to be a Widowmine drop coming out of Gumiho. And you know, nothing too crazy here. And game number one from either of these guys. I mean, Gubiho and Creator, two players that are not the type to shy away from experimenting or getting crazy, even in game one of a best of three, a best of five, a best of seven. But here, just playing you know, quite standard overall. Two more gateways in a robo, so three gate robo in total, along with Blink. I'm sure a third base will follow this, follow this after the Widowmine drop gets repelled. And I'm looking to shape up to Pretty standard macro game. Oh, there oh. we go. Value. Now that's, you know, we talk about this, but that's the kind of moment that could be tilting uh, for Creator. There is also a big drop coming up towards the main. Oh, and he's also losing. He's baiting that Adept away a little bit. His probes are not mining either. Yeah, yeah. He pulled him away into the range of the shield battery. And Camille's doing a good job of kind of giving Creator the runaround right now, as this Adept is also going to get caught. Camille's, oh, actually going to grenade him into the Widow Mine. <laughs> All right, and okay, so Creator does catch this Widowmine drop in the main base. Medivac might be able to get away. Oh, Blink is done. He's been chrono boosting that one, so this should be a nice cleanup here for Creator. Great control here from Creator. Yeah, actually very well done. I mean, the idle time, it does hurt, but only two probes in total going down. You get the Medivac and three Widowmines. That is a win for Protoss, absolutely. Dude, bouncing the Adept in the range of the Widowmine, though. Yeah. That I, is cool. I wonder if the Adept, okay, so it's dead. I don't know if it actually, I think it did kill the Widowmine because it was still, it was still recharging. Yeah, so it wasn't yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, I think the Reapers it might have finished still been it vulnerable. off. Yeah. That was a very cool play, though. Love watching guys like Gumiho do stuff like this. Like some of the, some of the quirky moves they can come up with are just so cool. Like, that wouldn't occur to me to like grenade it into the Widowmine. <laughs> <laughs> So Creator finally cleaning up everything on his side of the map. Last Reaper does go down, so now it's just Marines, Tanks, and a Raven on Gumiho's side of the map. And Creator with uh, Templar Archive coming out behind this, too, and also a Stalker drop. Okay. How much do you think this is going to kill, Tasteless? Probably not a lot. <laughs> yeah, <it> was, <laughs> if you were a betting man, that's right. that would have been a good one. <laughs> um. No, I mean, this is, you know, so far, though, honestly, from Creator, but a pretty decent game. He had some shaky moments at the start, but he's got that Templar Archives up now. He's getting all his gates out. Uh, and the Storm upgrade started. So this is just a very trendy build in the meta now this year. We see a lot of Protoss players uh, try to dish out this style of play. And the idea is that if you just get a couple good Storms, mm -hmm. you're, you're going to make the uh, attacking army so brittle that the Stalkers and everything else can pretty much clean it up. It feels a little bit like an older style of PBT. Yeah, it does, right? I feel like actually a really old style for how long, um, you know, Legacy of the Void three base play has been out. Uh, and even getting Storm, even before that, there were some moments where Protoss would try to tech rush into that. That's kind of like the old, old, old StarCraft 1 idea was in certain matchups, like you just need to rush into Storm because it's so good. Uh, and it went away. Idea-wise, in StarCraft 2, it seems like in competition for a little while, but it seems to be very much back in style. Yeah, I like that Protoss players are trying to mix it up a little bit and try to, you know, find a solution to the meta problem that is PBT right now for them. And a lot of Protoss players think that Storm might just be the way. Personally, I wouldn't mind at all if the meta decided to trend this way. I think Storm PBT is one of the most enjoyable matchups to watch by a lot. I mean, it feels like so much is hanging on every thread. Sure. That's oh, a lot of damage stalkers. on these stalkers, by the way. They're almost all bruised. Yeah, Creator's trying to buy a little bit more time. He wants to get more energy. He wants time for Immortals to pop out on this side of the map because this is a very dangerous push coming across by Gumiho. Behind this, there is a third command center that is nearly done. 
First Storm comes in. Not the best one. A little bit of damage is done. But now with charge completed, you got to think the creator might be feeling like it's time to go. A little bit disjointed here, in fact. Yeah, this is uh, a fight that seems like Terran is, is narrowly hanging on. Here comes mm. the storms now. Uh, the Immortal being here can basically uh, push this all the way back. And it's definitely a fight where both sides suffered losses, but I feel like Terran no longer has the ability to try to gain any ground. And the counter push, I think he can actually just seesaw all the way to the other side of the map. I think that he can deny the third CC. Yeah, there might be an opportunity for that. I think Creator has two or three storms in total in the bag across these two Templar because he warped them in very early. The question is, does he want to push? More Immortals in production, more being rallied across the map as he's going to start gunning for a fourth base soon, you would think. And now just kind of pivoting over towards the natural expansion and the third base here of Gumiho. And I feel like there is a window here. You know, only 13 Marines, 13 Marauders, a handful of Wooda Mines. Well, I, you know, it, I don't know that he can come in from this side. I think he might have had a chance and he just pushed directly, but I feel like now it's going to be a little bit tough to get it. He's going to warp in these Zealots. Yeah, there's an Archon, There's which basically is the unit that says the Protoss wants to go, but this is also scary because Ooh. the Disables here on the Warp Prism, the Templar on the Warp Prism has two Storms in total in terms of energy, but now it's you know, disabled. Gumiho is strengthening his position here in the center. He's backing up. I think the Medivacs actually had almost no energy, by the way. Mm. So it, I don't think they could have done much other than stim. And they would have to like win the fight immediately or they would just all get uh, wiped out. I mean, so much of winning with, you know, Marine Marauder Medivac is having the sustain, uh, the heal that kind of couples with that, that lets you actually slowly snowball the fight. Colossus production now underway here for Creator. Second Robo as well. So as soon as Gumiho finds the answer to the Templar with, oh, he's gonna get a Raven, isn't he? Nice. Nice catch. That was a high energy Raven too. It's half the Ravens with that group. All right, War Prism coming into the natural expansion. We'll get taken out there by the Missile Turret as he yeah. didn't have the best passage, but still able to find some SCV kills. A little clumsy by uh, Creator, you know, just uh, he doesn't, you want to have the Warp Prism stay alive so you have the option to really warp in if you see the Terran's not committed, but this is gonna be cleaned out in no oh, time. he got a ghost. Nine SCVs and a ghost. I mean, even though it was a little bit clumsy, this is absolutely worth it for Creator, even with these Zealots coming into oh the third God. base. Just stepping right on that Widow Mine. I mean, Widow Mines across the map, especially once the armory is done. So annoying for Protoss to deal with. There should be three Colossi in total for this push. Thermal Lance also about halfway done. You know, the fact that one of those Ravens, especially the high energy Raven, got sniped by these Stalkers earlier in the game is so good here for Creator after pivoting into Colossus Tech. So, you know, with four bases up here for Protoss, um, this is looking pretty good for Creator. He's getting the, the Colossi, like you mentioned, State. He's going to have the splash damage to pair with that. And, you know, so much of the matchup from the Protoss' perspective is getting enough types of splash damage that. Uh, you know, when the Terran army comes out, th the way the pathing works, things group up so much that splash damage is, it's so pronounced in the game that that's kind of what you want to rely on. But there is counters to this here as well. Ghosts could EMP uh, Templars uh, at the right angle. Certainly Marauders could charge into the Colossi and pick them off if they're not positioned correctly. Yeah, and right now Creator has been trading a lot of Zealots, a lot of Stalkers out just to find damage, you know, sniping Ravens, going for drops like that. So there isn't too much meat to this Protoss army. It's a lot of very high-tech units. There's two Archons, I think four Immortals in total, four Colossi, but only about 17 Gateway units right now on the ground, 10 Stalkers and seven Zealots. So as far as compositions go, this has a lot of power, but also feels very fragile. So the way the creator navigates the map and how he sets up for whatever the next engagement is gonna be, has a lot of say on how it's going to go, especially with this Raven and all these ghosts on such high energy now. I mean, Gumiho has really been biding his time, just allowing his upgrades to come in, not afraid of scaling alongside the Protoss player here. Yeah, and, and the game overall has actually quieted down quite a bit. Uh, you know, a lot of times PVT, it doesn't last that long very often. It seems like it's, you know, a matchup where either side can get the kill. Uh, either way, but we're getting to the point where both sides are going to be maxed out, which means eventually 
you know, a, a fight has to happen, right? You can't just stay back and turtle forever. It does look like it's Gumiho who's itching more to have that, but uh, where exactly is he going to go? I feel like Gumiho is almost posturing just to keep the expansion rate of Creator down more than anything else. I mean, his army is effectively split in two here with these groups, and they're just roaming around these sections of the map where Creator might want to drop a Nexus, so he's going to walk in here, see there's none. Maybe pop back out. We'll see. I do see Mile on the minimap actually decided he might go for a snipe here. Let's see what damage yeah, he's well, able to find. He's hitting two areas pretty hard. I don't know exactly what the spread is like. It actually looks pretty good, excuse me, for Creator. Um, you know, but with Colossi, as a unit, especially in really long games, one thing to remember is, like, they're not that fast. They're not that quick. It's kind of funny because the way they were designed, like, if you go all the way back and look at the tapes of, like, Blizzard showing this unit, which was one of the units they debuted for StarCraft II, it's like, look, and it would, like, walk up high ground, mm -hmm. and, and you could hear gasps in the Korean audience, like, oh, my God. <laughs> it was a very it was, it was very War of the World when yeah, it came out, Yeah, it was, like, it was whoa. Sick. But then if you, like, look at the way it's used now, it never really does that. It just kind of stands on top of your army. Ooh. So it's not that quick, and so you can kind of just cut, take advantage of that as Terran and kind of stay nimble, stay quick, and just keep hitting these different sides. And by the way, continuing to grow along with that. Yeah, Gumiho is just powering up so heavily on these four bases, five bases now, excuse me, as he sets up another orbital command. And with all these CCs, with, with nukes also underway, it feels like Gumiho is starting to pivot towards a truly late game composition. Now double digits in Ghost and Watch to see him start to trade out some of these lower value units like the Marines and the Marauder Marauders as he's building this bank. Oh, nice catch here. Shield batteries with an overcharge should be able to deal with this quite effectively. But oh, Gumiho, he's just gutting to try and find some trades for these bio units that are diminishing in value. And there is a Templar here to Storm. But with Creator at 191 supply, it's a little hard to find the units to warp in, right? Three DTs will be the answer here. Yeah, I mean, it always is a problem, right? When you've maxed out, is that if they drop you, you don't have any way to warp stuff in. Nuke coming in now at the fourth base of Creator. I am worried that Creator waited too long to, to be active on the map. And, and I feel like now he's sort of stuck um, against a Gumiho that is always ready to circumvent whatever Creator would try to do. Yeah, Kumiho's absolutely playing for the Supreme late game here. I mean, with, with nukes, with all these orbital commands, and with how rapidly he's teched up, his army you know, goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with creators, basically. Even if they were to fight right now in the middle of the field, I feel like Kumiho could easily take him on. So there is a little bit of a fear here for creator that perhaps he did lose that momentum. He did lose any window that he might have had to really stop the growth of the Terran player, because I'm looking at the minimap right now, and I just keep seeing all these little blue squares that are command centers just everywhere on the left side. And once it gets up to this extreme amount of, you know, double-digit orbitals, potentially, that's when Terran can start even trading out SCVs to make their army even more powerful, something no other race can do in this game, as yet another attack nuke strike comes down. Actually, here on this base, the fifth base of Creator, as this Nexus will get sniped. And oh, no, is Creator going to walk into this one? Not sure he's aware. He didn't pull away any probes, and yeah, that's some big damage. Yeah, I mean, the nukes, it's funny. You know, it's not every day you get a matchup like this one where you're, you're thinking of, you know, well, Terran now is the phase where they're going to nuke. That was a sick EMP. My God. Um, but here we are. Uh, it's become a, a very passive. By far the slowest PDT we've had here for this season of GSL, honestly, for the whole year of GSL. Yeah, it's been a slow one. And Creator, he's trying to play the late game right now. You see him making a carrier transition. Yep. But this has been scouted, I think, here by Gumiho with his scan. He should be able to see at least one Stargate, if I'm not mistaken. He's going to deny armor, uh, too. Oh, yeah, plus three grind weapons plus three, and yeah, plus sorry. three armor, both getting denied here. The first carrier is revealed. And man, that sets Creator back a lot. It takes a long time to finish that upgrade. Now he has to wait for the forges to complete and then restart the production. It's going to be minutes before those upgrades are done. and. Now Gumiho taking into BCs, getting a lot of capital ships on the field. And looking at the banks right now and the mini-map with how massively Gumiho is just consuming his side of Gresven, I'm feeling really good about Gumiho's odds of taking this game.
I'm trying to imagine, you know, what Creator can do from this position to really start to even things up, and I'm not thinking of a lot of solutions, and that's, that's a dangerous situation here for the Protoss player because, you know, we can see everything. Sure, we have, the yeah. we have the God's view, right? We can see everything on the map, and even now, the problem to solve for Creator, it feels very difficult. Yeah, well, I mean... It's, it's going to be a lot of time before he can really get, like, you know, a carrier fleet out that's going to be viable. He's not really interfering with the Terran almost at all. I mean, I guess these Immortals are going to be up here. But this is really him just wanting to get rid of these Immortals to free up supply. So, you know, I get it in some matchups where you're like, I'm just going to hang on. Mm -hmm. I'm going to outlast you. And it's like, okay, but Terran's also trying to do that. So one of you is wrong. Yeah. You know? And I might catch some flack for this, but I, I've always felt like if Terran truly can get to, you know, mass BC type late game, there really yeah. isn't much of an answer for Protoss. I mean, you really only have Tempest that can handle them. Yeah, I mean, it, it, there's a point, and I mean, we'll see what happens because we might end up in exactly that game. But I'm curious with, with Creator, uh, you know, a lot of times you try to get up a, a couple more bases, and then you want to try to control the Terran's growth. Mm -hmm. you, you're kind of almost playing that Zerg's role for a little bit, but then you do need to end the game here. And instead, we saw a really passive game. And I mean, you know, again, Terrans are never supposed to be able to just easily get the half the map the same way that uh, uh, Zerks can. Protoss are also not supposed to easily get half the map. Doesn't mean it doesn't happen, because it's happening in this game for both races right now. But um, if you're going to have a game like this where development-wise, the Terran just goes unimpeded, I do wonder how exactly that pans out for a Protoss. And by the way, this is a matchup we don't really have long games in. It's actually one of the shorter matchups uh, in StarCraft II. Yeah, it's quite rare that we have games go this long. And you know, Creator, he is, I understand him trading out these Immortals to try and build this super fleet of carriers, which, oh my goodness, he's 11 of them now. I'm really worried about his bank, Tasteless. I mean, less than a thousand minerals still, and he's gonna be making more carriers, so that's certainly going to go down because he is not yet maxed. Whereas Gumiho right now is sitting on 6,000 plus total resources with a massively efficient army composition. Even looking at the bottom right there for a moment, we had it on screen. I think it was minus 19,000 resources lost for Creator, 11,000 for Gumiho. So he has just been so efficient. And should this really go to a truly split map scenario where we're starting to mine out all of these bases, you know, say Creator is able to bounce back and despite not having this bank that he needs, is able to fully take his side of the map, well, then cost efficiency, it comes into play, right? And suddenly, you being minus 8,000 res in terms of cost efficiency really hurts. Yeah. Because that's all the extra resources that Terran can just invest in their army that you've already spent on units that have died. Yeah. I mean, well, here come the BCs. 12, 13 carriers, by the way. I don't even think I've seen this many carriers from a Protoss player. Maybe I'm dead wrong, and these can actually just destroy BCs, but... Well, let's see. I mean, I, you know, I don't really cast games that look like this, right? A lot of times the um, PBTs are a little bit more action-packed early on, where this one was uh, very slow at the start. And, you know, here we are. Now he's getting Tempest, so he's going to try to mm -hmm. complete his army. There is something to what Creator's doing, though, right? There's a point where maybe, in theory, you could bank up so much money, slowly trade out your Immortals. Um, I don't know what the, you know the next thing in the decision tree is for what mm -hmm. to trade out. I guess maybe Stalkers or something. Yeah, stalkers, for sure. Um, but oh boy. eventually, you just get enough of an army that, like, you know, it's like, well, how does Terran deal with it, even if they can refresh and remake stuff? By the way, you know, the maxed out... Um, Protoss now has a dilemma where he can't get warps, warp ins easily here, so the carriers are going to come through to try to take care of that. Plus, plus two air weapons and armor both get denied, by the way. Yeah. Which is just absurd because that is his entire army right now is the Sky Fleet, and it only has plus one air weapons. And keep in mind, you know, Gumiho, he has been pumping. He's at plus two vehicle armor right now with battle cruisers, which already have insane base armor. So these carriers. They're really not going to get that much done in the VCs in a straight up fight. It's really going to come down to the Tempest and whatever other supporting units the creator has. Now, yeah, he is able to kill this bio force, but this is much akin to what creator was doing earlier by sectioning off some immortals to just pick off command centers or planetary fortresses and slow the growth of Terran, where Gumiho with this massive bank is like, okay, I don't need this bio anymore. 
I just need battle cruisers. He has eight on the field right now. A lot more in production, I'm sure. And his comp is basically just going to be Ghost PC. Okay, uh, he is on the move now. And this is going to be the moment we're finally going to find out, okay, like, what do you do against this much Protoss? Now, he's going to go for a counterattack. I would not be surprised if we don't see Creator blink an eye. If he just ignores this and says, I will wipe out your entire base before you can kill me off. I think if Creator goes for that choice, it, it's, it's, it's him basically building his own coffin, though, because he has no bank behind this. Gumiho, yes, he is going to lose these bases. And, okay, he doesn't have a lot of gas left stored up, but the Mineral Bank right now, 3k plus, is huge. So base trading here for Gumiho. But Creator, he's not max. He can't even reach max from this point. Gumiho can at least remax on 3-3 three, three Marines, right? That's a good point. So it is a very scary situation. And also the BCs can maybe come in here and just unpower the uh, Stargates. Yeah. I mean, there's just so much damage that can be done here by Gumiho. Wouldn't be surprised to see some of these battle cruisers as they get lower and lower in HP just start to teleport away. I don't know exactly what the cooldown is on them right now. Keep in mind, Gumiho did just kill the Fleet Beacon, so there isn't really going to be any air reinforcement coming out of Creator. And now Creator is going home, and he has no economy waiting for him back. He's still waiting for plus two air weapons. There's no Fleet Beacon, so he can't remax on the composition that he is gunning for as Gumiho just continue, continues to pester him with these nukes. Meanwhile, Gumiho, yes, he did lose some bases, but that bank, he's exhausting it. He's going to reach max army supply once again. 171 army supply, by the way, Tasteless. It's absurd. He has 14, 14 SCVs. 14 SCVs, yeah. Well, he has mules, though. I mean, this is what you can do in the extreme late game as Terran. This is why yeah. I feel like oftentimes in PvT, the Protoss really is on a timer. You know, there is a momentum where and, it, Terran's and, good in the early game. We get to the mid game where Protoss, once they get all their pieces together, very powerful. But then if you get to this stage of the game where Terran literally doesn't need SCVs and their army can be 18 battle cruisers plus whatever other support, it's a scary situation for a Protoss player. And here we go. BC's warping in on top of the whole fleet. Oh my god, there's so much damage coming out here now. Are the carriers in Tempest going to be high enough, or is it going to be possible here for Gumio to overpower him? It looks like it is. Wow, GG. Gumio clearly with a better and deeper understanding of the late game. And I like what you were saying, State, because I think it's so true. The reality is that not all map matchups function differently. I think some people wish they all function the same, like every race has the same opportunity at different moments in a game. Uh, but you know, the truth is sometimes one uh, side has to beat the other before things get out of hand. And I think Creator unintentionally painted himself into a corner with his carrier tech and Gumio let him do it. Exactly. It, it, Gumio, when he realized he's not gonna get attacked, he just went, oh, okay. Well, I'll go back here and make my stuff. And you can see what happened. Creator finally got what he asked for. Mass carriers, mass tempest. And Gumio said, yeah, bring it on. And one, no problem. 170 army supply of mostly battle cruisers yeah. can beat pretty much anything. As, uh, yeah, Gumiho's going to take game one in pretty convincing fashion there. Although I got to say, Creator, he looked very solid in the early and mid game. I think if he turns it up a notch and goes for a little bit more of an aggressive style here in game number two, does not let Gumiho reach that supreme late game. These guys can go toe to toe. 2023 GSL Season 2. Club NV, creator. So I don't think we're gonna have a crazy long game like that last one. That was, was that a half hour? It was close to Maybe it. 25 minutes, I mean, it, it, it was long. And by the way, you know, it's, it's funny. We have plenty of long games here at GSL. We never have ma that matchup long. Yeah, it's very rare for TB TBP to actually go that late. Yeah. Um, but here we are, right? Uh, yeah, it just seems like Creator, uh, I think, unaware uh, tech-wise of the limitations of his position. And the fact that Gumiho, 
as aggressive as he's known to be, once he realizes, oh, you're like not going to come get me? Okay, well, I'm not doing that anymore then. Uh, and, you know, knows how to basically abuse battle cruisers, do hit and run, uh, and then use that recall or the warp ability or whatever it's called to kind of position himself so that he can always take a fight. Four creator fans in the audience here. Yeah, he's been oh. working for so long to try to come out with a, uh, a GSL win. I, I wonder, you know, in our live times if we're going to see him do that. Perhaps. I mean, it's tough right now, especially in the current meta. You know, it felt like Creator was really on the cusp, the precipice of something great just a year ago. But as it is right now, especially in a group like this, it's so hard to advance. Dark is so good. Gumiho seems to be in, you know, one of the best forms of his life. Sure. Right now. Special as well. Even against Dark, you know, he might have lost two to one, but he looked fantastic from start to finish oh, yeah. pretty much. No, he looked to be in very good form, actually. This is one of the more challenging groups, and I mean... It is funny, by the way. It does seem like TBT is almost getting shorter sometimes. TBT? TBT, yeah, yeah. It seems like people are getting so much better at killing each other. Yeah, well, they, they've had a lot of practice tasteless. <laughs> 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 All right, so uh, Creator just going for a gateway expand. Stalker, and then yeah, just cancel that Zealot to build a sentry. I was wondering whether he would continue production on that, whereas Gumiho playing a little bit safer here. Faster tech, CC on the high ground. Goes for a factory and then a Stargate. Right there at home. Yeah, Looks like for a moment he might have considered building a Hellion there out of that factory, but instead opting for the tech lab, so. We haven't seen mech today. I wonder if Gumiho will try any sneaky mech tricks here against Protoss. He could, he might. Um, <clears throat> you know, especially this active mech style where he's got like a bunch of Colossus. Uh, not, not, uh, Cyclones running around, mm -hmm. excuse me. A battle mech. Yeah, that, that kind of fighting mech style that, you know, really he, in a lot of ways, pioneered. Um, you know, for Creator, I want to see, does he play more of a, a sensible game? I mean, I, I, I like the experimentation of ideas, but again, there's a reason why we don't see that. And I think you called this very well early on, State. But can we see a more active creator? Because at times he's been so good with his timing attacks. I feel like he has to find some window in the mid game, especially against a player who is as good at late game TVP as Gumiho. I mean, Gumiho and Maru are probably, probably like the two players that just off the top of my head in Korea would be absolutely terrifying to go up against in the late game. I guess sure. TY now as well, if he can return to form, also very scary here. As creator comes in with a Phoenix, is able to get the full scout off on the Terran player, spots the add on on the Cyclone, and he should know that those are in production. I think that Phoenix actually camping above that factory right now on the minimap, if I'm not mistaken. And this drop's gonna go. come into the main base. There's a pylon that is very exposed right now, even if he gets the Cybernetics core, which is, uh, you know, another big moment here. I guess even if he gets the gateway, anything that, that he can get here is pretty good. The Stalkers have pretty good angles. He's gonna come Ooh. around now. Yeah, that's a little bit scary there for Creator with only two Stalkers here on the low ground and no way to get the get them to join up with their buddies. Second oh. Cyclone's here. Yeah, second Cyclone's here. First Cyclone gets dropped one Ooh, hit away. Oh, my God. From getting cleaned up. But nice pickup micro there by Gumiho. Yeah, I think he wasn't expecting a second Cyclone. He thought he just had to come in at the right angle and move this away. He's going to get this gateway now. And yeah, this gateway should certainly go down. I don't know what a game like this is going to look like if he gets the gateway immediately. It is, you know, certainly uh, not a structure you can really afford to, to, to have disappear this early on. And now a sentry is going to go down. Wow. Yeah, only two warp gates now on the field here for Creator. And you can even see his minerals kind of ballooning up right now a little bit as he's not able to macro as well as he wants to. Now Blink is done, so there is some micro potential here for these stalkers, especially against these upgraded Marines as Creator takes down both a Cyclone and a handful of bio units. but. Cloak Banshees are underway. Robotics facility only just now begun. So if I'm not mistaken, there should be a pretty long window here where Gumiho is going to be able to come into that main base with that Banshee. And unless there's a battery, rain hell on that mineral line. So, okay, batteries are in production. Two of them, in fact. Oh, this could be a really good catch for Creator. Yeah, not bad. Creator is going to finally come out and flatten that attack. But here comes that Banshee. Yeah. He can come in here right now if he can find the right angle to hit these probes. Oh, I thought that pylon was another shield battery instead. There oh, is an yeah. angle on the left side. And also here in the natural expansion, just so much idle time going to be forced here. And 
I don't know if Gumiho caught a glimpse of the robotics facility just now finishing, but he should yeah. know that he has a pretty good window. The question is, how much damage can Creator get done on Gumiho's side of the map? Because there are two siege tanks, so the kill potential isn't there, but this natural expansion, very exposed. Yeah, you know, he um, he, he really uh, neglected getting the bunker earlier here, so at an unusual moment, the Stalkers can come in here and really try to take a fight. Uh, he doesn't manage to kill the CC. He does manage to be a bit of a nuisance, though. Five SCVs have been killed off here. The battery doing some work, but eventually the Banshee can try to snowball some of that damage. It's, it's kind of painful to watch a Banshee try to out DPS yeah. a shield battery. It takes like six hits to kill a probe. Um, going big picture here, I mean, there's a considerable amount more workers for Creator, but it is a moment that, you know, uh, Gumio can try to catch up in. Uh, there were a lot of units that were pretty important that were killed off. I mean, the Cyclones were killed there from um, uh, Creator to Gumiho, but the Cyclones are kind of expendable. You're kind of bringing them out to kill off other Stalkers and kill sentries and whatever else you can get. Yeah, resetting the bio count is more impactful for me as an observer here in this game, because even mm -hmm. if it's just, you know, eight Marines, that's still a sizable amount of units. You know, you think about how much more powerful any Terran push early in the game would be with eight more Marines, once they have stim and combat shield and plus, plus one infantry weapons, you know, it's a night and day difference. So really good pick there for Creator. And I think, you know, in particular, because he was able to kill that Cyclone, I think maybe even the Medevac and all of those Marines. I'm liking his position here a lot. I wouldn't even mind him throwing down a fourth base as he decides to tech up more back at home. Okay, the Banshees are, are headed in here again in the south. A really healthy looking uh, amount of racks and factories here, pumping out a lot of infantry. That that account has been reset pretty hard. Char charge is gonna be done. Um, he does oh. nicely done, snipe down that one tanker. He had a chance to pick that up with the medevac, but wasn't quite fast enough. I This is a scary position here for Gumiho a little bit, I think. I don't know if he appreciates. Oh my God. Okay, that's a nice That's catch. a lot of hits. I don't know, for whatever reason in my head, I thought there was an observer with this army, but... Creator uh, right now, he's just basically going man There was an observer with that army. It's still parked outside the natural. Oh, I see, I see. But yeah, he, he's just pumping out on gateways right now. His army is 26 zealots and 10 stalkers, and so should Gumiho had moved across the map, I feel like if Creator was able to get a full surround, he could have mopped the floor with this force. But instead, just going to opt to go for the counterattack and instead bide some time back at home. He does get nine SCVs for his trouble, and he is now going to levy some pressure here on the third base of Gumiho. Able to get a siege tank as well with some good micro. Focus it down. Tank gets taken out. That's a lot of firepower being eliminated here, and there are so many gateways tasteless. So many more zealots getting warped in. Look at all Dude, this Protoss. Dude, yeah, this is, this is a lot uh, coming out here from Creator. Um, does he quite have you know, the muscle to kind of take this down. It's starting to really look like it. I mean, I don't see anyone anything on the ground can survive here. Um, good positioning with the tanks. Really, Gumiho able to think on his feet, kind of relocate over here. Uh, remember that if Creator, it, it turns out to be an overextension, the counterattack could be devastating as well. Yeah, well, he has to make something happen right now. He doesn't have any forges or any follow-up tech behind this just yet. Just three base powering on gateways is, I mean, these Banshees continuing able to find DPS, and now with the stutter step, Gumiho finding good control here with his bio, able to whittle down the Zealot count here at Protoss. The question is, will these Warpins ever be able to, enough to actually break through? I feel like there might just be enough here for Gumiho, and although the damage that Creator has done is substantial. Oh, I can't believe this Orbital is actually still here. I thought he would have brought the main. So low on HP, does get taken out. That does change the dynamic a bit. Yeah, well, you know, again, it, it was a moment Creator wanted to get the killing blow off, but instead he got a crippling blow. Mm. Uh, and he's going to stay outside here. He's not going to let him take another base. And I think a really good play by Creator right now, he's going to take a four. Now, these games get pretty interesting because upgrades were neglected for Protoss, right? You don't just choose to have a whole lot of stuff and also have all the abilities and all the future tech and everything. So, um, he will try to play catch up from there, but it's also a real dilemma here for Gumio. How is how is he going to be able to get out on the map? Is Creator going to blink up into the main base? Yes, he does. Only a small group of bio units. Should be a good trade, and that fourth nexus now completing. A lot of gas in the bank here for Creator. With the Templar archives done, you got to think that Storm is going to be here in the cards. I'm liking Creator's position quite a bit. The only issue is that without splash damage, Gumio absolutely can steamroll him. And oh no, we're going to make Archons 
Uh oh, tasteless. <laughs> yeah. I feel it. I mean, I understand there oh, isn't the a lot of time. Oh, the boys have been pulled. Oh, the boys are getting pulled. Okay, those Archons suddenly look a little bit better, but still, this is a very scary push that's going to be coming I mean, out from Gumi Home. This is about as bad of a boy pull as you can have. <laughs> Those boys should have stayed at home. Those no, boys, yeah, they should not have. They should not be out on the map. It's just so much bio, though, and it's 1-1 one, one bio as well. Keep in mind, still no upgrades for Creator. Gumiho, do or die right now. If he wins, he's heading to the winner match of Group C. Whoa, big unpowering. Two gateways and the Robo are, are no longer functional. Also, fantastic choke point, choke point for Gumiho to fight in, too. Oh, hold up, man. You know, I think there's just enough. Tucked back here. The Protoss can't quite get up with everything. He's going to blink away to try to give his Immortals some oxygen. Um, it's very close. I, Kumiho might just have enough. And you know ultimate what? completely whittled down. I, I feel like if Crater could just hold off a oh little bit. Oh, my God. And, there's more. There's more coming. Oh, boy. Well, hold on. He's, he's uh, not being very careful with it. I, I feel like with enough Warpins back at home, Crater can... Dislodge Gumiho from that position of the natural expansion. Only two SCVs on the field right now for Gumiho. He does still have mules, so he could use that to squeak out a few more uh, Marines. Uh, this is going to get annihilated. I, th it, I think Creator's got this. I think you're right. Oh, what a crazy well, game! Well, hold number on, two. he's going to loop uh, back around. Where where is the big mining base? That's I guess I guess it's at six o'clock, isn't it? Yeah, it's the third base here for Creator. Is the one right now with I think most of the probes mining from and. For He's Crater, it's just all about intercepting reinforcements and not letting this ball of units get any bigger. But even you know a stalker here or there, you know, getting taking some damage, the army getting separated. Uh, you know he he's going to try to push in. The six o'clock base is the most important base. If he can kite like crazy, I think no, Crater's I think got right. it. You're right. The surround comes in, and Creator going to tie things up one to one here in wow. game two. What a crazy match, man. Yeah, he's trying, but I don't think there's any way he can no. string this together. GG Creator takes game two and what has been an amazing night of matches so far. We're still just getting started here in GSL Group C. A kind of a crazy pendulum uh, shift from game number one, about as slow PVT as we're going to get in yeah. GSL Code S to a very hot and heavy boy pull there in game number two. I feel like Gumiho, if he was able to hold on to that orbital command, you know, he landed it even though it was so low on HP and maybe thought he could stabilize. Perhaps didn't realize how committed Creator was to actually breaching that position. But if he had had that orbital, I feel like as Gumiho, you know, maybe you have one more minute where you just power up with the units and then you go for that push before Storm is out, before 1-1 one, one is done for Creator. Maybe you're actually able to break through. But instead, I mean, Creator just did a fantastic job of not only intercepting reinforcements, but he caught the SCVs that were coming out of the main base. A lot of the tanking for Gumiho was just completely written out of the equation. And Creator able to tie it up. All right, game three, let's go. 2023 GSL Season 2. Club NV, creator. Really fun style from creator in game number two. Yeah, and it's cool to see how different it was from game one. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, he really does have, uh, he's studied so many different ideas in the game. Um, and I appreciate that, you know, he's not just like somebody who's looking at the players who have been more successful and trying to do what they do or tweak that. He really has a very wide range of play styles, as Special has early on. I mean, it's true for both the players that we've had here today. Um, so yeah, let's see if it gets a little bit crazier, a little bit more aggressive here in, uh, in game three. Welcome, guys. Good to see you guys in the studio. Um, I, I'm i curious here. It does feel like today has been a day where not a single game has been normal. It does feel that way, yeah. I guess it is that way, if you look at all of our games. I'm trying to think back, <laughs> you know, we were only in the second series, but the game's have been so long that it is, it does feel a little tough to get a read on exactly what's going on. 
But yeah, game, game, the first series, Dark versus Gumiho, very crazy games, very wild. Game number one, one of the longest PBTs that we've seen between Gumiho and Creator. Game number two, an almost like Adele Scott style, like from Wings of Liberty with just mass gateway units knocking on the Terran's <laughs> yeah. door, was also very fun to see. Now, GSL Code S this season has been so much fun. I feel like every single group has had its own little flair. All the games have been interesting. It's such a treat. Yeah, it's been really good, man. It's been really, it's really fun. It's cool to see StarCraft keeps changing and we still have new styles that are, are coming out and are developing. Um, so this game, I, you know, we need a little bit more time, I think, to see really what's going to happen here. Both sides are fast expanding with pretty modest defenses. So, you know, just enough to maybe scout and poke, but uh, certainly never enough to attack in and do real damage or to be attacked themselves. Yeah, double adapt opening here for Creator. And he delayed Warp Gate quite a bit to get this slightly faster Stargate. So really prioritizing that part of his arsenal here. And see what damage he's able to find with this. Actually, is able to come in because the because the probe got at least one hit off on the Marine. Yeah, this is so funny. He so, was able to two-shot it. This is never how this interaction is <laughs> supposed to look. But the probe, yeah, harassed just a little bit. And then... That kind of butterfly affected its way yeah. uh, into the game oh, later he's, on. He's going to get the SCV too. This is so, sick so, for Creator. Yeah, this is really bad. This is really, really bad for the uh, the Terran because in any normal situation, you never end up uh, losing the SCV as the command center is being made. And it's it's supposed gonna be, to be mapped out perfectly. It's going to be an Oracle follow-up too. So also whittling down the Marine count this early can pay dividends here for Creator. It's so cool to see. Yeah, if you're oh, in a situation where he cancels where it and makes a phoenix, never mind. Oh, that's weird. Why did he do that? I think perhaps it was the Hellion as a tail. Maybe he thought that it was going to be one of these more, you know, finicky high tech harassment type openings coming mm -hmm. out of Gumiho. But Gumiho has already switched the add-ons. He's making a Raven now. So yeah, I thought well, maybe he thinks it's going to be like a some kind of a drop later on. Yeah, and that you know, Phoenix is kind of just. Uh, completely mute the effectiveness of that. Yeah, I mean, if your opponent goes for like a Widow Mine drop or a Hellion drop and you catch it with Phoenixes, it's one of the best feelings in the world as a Protoss player. It's like this, it literally doesn't get better in terms of opening, generally speaking, is some nice control here by Gumiho. You should be able to get into the main base now. Oh, never mind. It's a lot of adepts. But yeah, it is an interesting choice, especially after killing uh, at least one of those Marines. And you know that there's a Reactor and the, the Reaper to not go for the Oracle and try to find a little tiny bit of damage. But perhaps, you know, all oh. those low HP SCVs got cleaned up. So there really isn't too many easy pickings to be found there for Protoss. He's hiding the Phoenixes. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to show the count. Yeah, now you can, yeah, you can still go by the Stargate and see what's warping in. But yeah, now I, he did actually, it was like a split second, but he saw the phoenixes move away. Oh, did he? Yeah, so he's actually, as long as he spotted that, we don't know if he saw that or not, but um, if he was paying attention, he should know that the intention here of Creator is to hide the phoenixes. So, uh, I mean, Gumiho, if he's scouted correctly, he, he can try to just completely counter this play. Yeah, he put the Raven all the way in the top left corner, so I think he is aware of this, just kind of hiding it right now. and. You know, Creator, if he were to come into the main base with the Phoenixes and just do a quick scan of exactly what Terran has set up, he might not get the read that there is a Raven on the field. So nice play by Gumiho, just putting that, tucking that away in the corner. Let's see if Creator does happen to cross it. Would be a very nice catch for him if he was able to find it. So here's that third base. Now in this game, Terran is going to have some real opportunities to try to attack out. Uh, make no mistake about that. So Protoss needs to be on his toes. Then this is going to probably look more like many of the PVTs we've had in years past. Yeah, it's three gateways with a factory and the starport. Tanks are getting pumped. Or and wait, are there any ticks on the field? I thought for for sure I was seeing. No, he's going to do a widow mine push. Oh, he I made think. one. I see. Well, that's the thing. I think when he saw the phoenixes move away, he goes, "Oh, okay. Okay. First of all, I'm not going to harass you. Second of all, I'm going to make units that are not as easy to deal with mm -hmm. uh, via phoenix." Yeah, it's a good read there by when, Gumiho. When you see the tank siege up, you basically send your uh, ground army in and then send the Phoenixes in to pick up the tanks, um, immobilize them, and, and then try to swing the fight that way. Uh, I guess, sorry, there was one tank here, but I think that was from earlier on. But the point is, is that 
He's just not getting, uh, allowing for Crater to get any value here. And you know as this push comes across the map that the anxiety is going to be real here for Creator. Especially considering he went Colossus here against a Raven. So unless he's able to get the pick on that one, as Gumiho's trying his darndest to keep protecting it, this Gumiho's just you know, running around, or this uh, Raven, excuse me, is running around in circles right now. And you can tell Cre Creator recognizes how important it is that he tries to take that down as he trades away all of the shields on every single Phoenix, it feels like, just to get a chance at it. Yeah, he's taking some damage. Um, oh, good catch. Yeah, you need to get rid of this uh, Observer. I, he should be able to get that with that Marine down there. Um, and then he needs to figure out what angle he wants to fight at. Now, it seems like Creator is actually trying to figure out if he can intercept the push. A lot of times when the Terran's not ready, maybe the Terran's in a macro cycle back at home. And Crater also is still hiding a little bit of his Phoenix count. He's up to eight, but he's only showing five right now. It's really Gumiho. smart. He wants him to overcommit here. And all right, here we come in. Armor Shredding Missile comes down on the Protoss army. And Creator maybe bit off a little bit more than he could chew right here as a disable also on the Colossus. Takes a lot of the firepower right away from this Protoss force. And now this Colossus is overextending. Marauders take it out. There are lifts coming in from the Phoenixes. So some nice trades there, but the Widow Mines should give Gumiho at least enough room to re-maneuver here. And um, at this point in time, it really could go either way. It's a really tough one to call. It does seem like the Phoenixes are finally being able to be used. You can see that the Terran army has thinned out enough that any one or two units that are scooped up by the Phoenixes make it that much more difficult for Gumiho to deal with. Yeah, and Gumiho has been very diligent about trying to focus fire down those Phoenixes with his Marines, but the count was so high. Eight now, Phoenixes in total still being produced, by the way. Can he seesaw this? It seems like he could. It seems like he, the Terran should be just softened up enough that a proper push in and he could make something happen. He's going to do a dive through, kill some uh, workers off, and then get out without suffering too much. He even gets a fresh mule. Always a nice pickoff there. And there could be an opportunity. Actually, is that what 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 is that all, all the way set up here at the, the 12 o'clock position on the mini map? I'm a little confused by what we're seeing. Is that a gateway to pylon? I think it might be. I think so. <laughs> I think he doesn't even want to bother with a war prism if yeah, he can wow. just yeah, reinforce from here. And look at this. Robo time, I guess, at a premium premium right now for creator. And you gotta think that after one more warp in, he's just gonna go. There's no Twilight Council to be found, so. Everything's coming down to this push. Oh, this one Colossus rallying across the map will get caught out. And Gumiho, look at the minimap. He's deciding he's going to go for a base trade. He's just moving head on into the natural expansion. So this game could get really funky really quickly, Tasteless. Yeah, he and the fact that uh, Creator went into the natural here, he's going to do exactly the same thing. He wants to get where the SCVs are, intercept the units that are going to be rallied out. Now, um, it would also seem like he could kill off all the workers in here and then just recall and kind of win in that sequence, is that correct? Yeah, maybe that could be that could be the play here from Creator. We'll see exactly what he opts to go for as he comes in with Phoenixes yet again. Lifts the Ghost and the Marauders. Also worth noting that because there are Phoenixes on the map right now, seven of them in fact, in total, not really an opportunity for Gumiho to go for a tie in this situation. It would be very difficult to actually pull that off. So there should be an outcome from this game where one player wins, one player loses. And Creator right now, content just to fully trade with Gumiho. He doesn't want to give him any room to re-expand. I guess he feels very confident in the army that he has. Over here, he feels like he can win straight up. I mean, 92 army supply to 53. I would certainly feel that way if I was in Creator's shoes. No, I, I think he's just got this. Yeah, the only thing that, that Gumiho has is, is a, a big surplus of minerals, but that only matters if you're able to uh, kind of stabilize your position here. Um, Protoss still has so many buildings that I don't think there's any way that they can all be wiped out in the main here. It's going to be a lot of work. Yeah, there's but, also a nexus with some probes over down by the uh, 7 o'clock position. Yeah. Now, I think Creator might just try to go expand and camp it out. Um, Terran, by the way, has way less re Oh, well, he has less resources because he's <laughs> building infrastructure again here. It's like a campaign mission right now, setting well, up all these defenses on this ramp. Here's what's funny. There's only seven SCVs. You need an SCV to finish a building. Yeah. There's actually a lot started here. So, like, 
it, it's not a, a thing you get to think about a lot. I guess everybody knows this, but it's a funny moment to actually observe it in a, in a professional match. This is such a funny situation. I, I think Crater just has enough that he can move up this ramp and basically kill him. <laughs> yeah, I, I th well, keep in mind, he also can't repair. Yeah. Very few minerals left, only 49 in total. Stim Forge should be able to get the Immortal, but I mean, there's just so much Protoss. Another Immortal of the Mac. Back, the Colossus also outranges the bunker here. Yeah, and again, no repairs available. He's going to jump out with the um, Marauders. There is a lot of energy on these Medivacs, but you know, any Marauder he snipes, it's pretty good. This army supply is twice that of his opponent, so he can basically just fire shots. There's no kind of siege counter here. There's no tank he can get uh, to fire back at this. Yeah. No liberation zone he can set up. And so this is a game that is going to result in Gumiho slowly bleeding out. Very slowly, painfully slowly. In fact, it's a small group of bio units. Oh, man, the laser is coming through. GG, creator. Wow, nice win against Gumiho. Yeah, that was cool. I mean, Kumiho is an excellent form, too, so for Creator to advance to face Dark in the winner's match. And Very this also exciting. Means, this also means we're going to have a TVT here uh, in the losers. Uh, it's going to be oh, Kumiho for right. special. That should be a lot of fun. Everybody's actually playing really well today. Yeah, it's uh, been a fun set of games. Only done with two series. We got, what, three left to go? Three more to go, man. Um, and at this point in time, we still have no idea uh, who will advance and who will be eliminated. I think all these uh, upcoming matches are hard to call. Creator versus Dark, man. Dark is good, but Creator is in some great form. We're going to go to a break, guys. Don't go away.